After yet another loss, the New Orleans Pelicans are entering the danger zone, but they have ways out when they get healthy and make one or two easy changes like playing Jordan Hawkins more. It's Thursday's episode of Locked On Pelicans. Let's go! You are Locked On Pelicans, your daily New Orleans Pelicans podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to another edition of Locked On Pelicans, the daily podcast covering your favorite team, the New Orleans Pelicans and NBA, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day, available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. I'm your host, Pelicans Insider, credential member of the media, Jake Madison, at Nola Jake on Twitter. Here with y'all on this Thursday, we are going to look at the Pelicans losing to the Orlando Magic 117-108. Yeah, we're going to get into the refs, some changes the Pelicans have to make to stop this kind of spiral, but I want to add some perspective to everything, because don't forget that without Brandon Ingram and Jose Alvarado, and that's a really important thing. Today's episode of Locked on Pelicans is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $200 if your bet wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked on to get started. And of course, thank you for making Locked on Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We are here Monday through Friday, the number one Pelicans podcast covering everything you want. You want a show about the offseason? Listen to yesterday's show where we talked about the key player they need to go and get. And become an everyday or listen Monday through Friday to Locked on Pelicans. If you are and you see me out at the arena, say hi. I got stickers to give you. Keep an eye out on something. Maybe on Monday we'll have a better idea of what it is. Maybe a little something special before the playoffs. And yes, there will be playoffs. Start for the New Orleans Pelicans. So let's get into the loss to the Orlando Magic. But I want to start with who wasn't there. This was a frustrating loss, but you've got to put it into perspective. One of the things that was actually a regular occurrence in this game, during this game, had nothing it had nothing to do with what was going on on the court. I had a couple of people, and y'all know who you are, come up to me during the game, right after the game, hi to whoever, you know, talk to me from your car as you were driving out, all of those things. But I got some version of like, oh no, we suck again. Oh no, the Pelicans suck again. I got a a number of people saying like, what's wrong with this team? The Pelicans are going to clip that and use it in like a promotional video. They've done that a few times where I sound like a villain. So what is wrong with the New Orleans Pelicans? Let's start there. Let's answer that question. The answer is they don't have Brandon Ingram right now. They don't have Jose Alvarado. They're missing their second best player and one of their more impactful players this season. Brandon Ingram gives you 21 points, six assists, and five rebounds per night. We'll get into a little bit more of what I'm going to say right here in the next segment. You know, of guys that are in the regular rotation, which is CJ McCollum, Trey Murphy, not Jordan Hawkins right now, Brandon Ingram would rank third in terms of three-point attempts. We want him taking even more than he normally takes. I'd take those 3.8 attempts per game right now. I really would. They need that. They don't have it. Jose Alvarado is someone they really, really need. He just brings in energy that this team is missing. We'll talk about composure and what Willie Green said after that with the refs talk here. But one of the things that you could very clearly see is the Pelicans, when they were kind of taken out of this game due to the physicality of the Orlando Magic, due to the refs and the way that they were calling the game, which was not great, they let that get to them. In a sense, they lost their composure by letting that affect their play. I don't care about the people getting ejected at the end. You need Jose Alvarado to give you that bolt of energy when you just don't have some. He's been doing that all season long. He is an impactful player. You're missing that right now. You know, I I, I put that out there where someone was like, hey, and I'm not trying to like call anyone out. I'm, I'm really not, right? Like that's not what I'm trying to say or anything with all this. I'm just using these as an example. You know, I said, you know, someone says, does it feel like this team is stuck in the same cycle as last year? And I tweeted back out, Yeah, if you mean in the sense of them missing one of their two best players and it's tough to win without them, then yeah, like this is just hard. Yeah, you're at home. So what? You're playing really good teams. In response to that, someone says, I feel lately like every team is missing one or two key players, though. And who was OKC missing when they played New Orleans? Nobody. No one impactful. When they didn't have Shea Gilgis-Alexander or Jalen Williams, they lost to the pretty bad Philadelphia 76ers, yeah, they got Joel Embiid back in that game, but Tyrese Maxey wasn't playing. Who was Boston missing 
when they played New Orleans. No one truly impactful. Look at this Orlando Magic team who was on their injury report, right? Even when they went and played the Bucs and beat them, which shows you some things here, they weren't really missing anybody. They're banged up compared to the teams that they are playing, and it just happens that they are really, really... They're playing good teams. It's just really hard to win when you're missing those kind of key players, right? When you looked at this game in particular, CJ McCollum had a really bad first half. Finished with a good stat line. He played hard and never gave up, and I appreciate that. But he struggled in the beginning. You know, at one point, I think I looked, he was 5 for 17 and had 16 points. Like, that's not good. Remove some of those shots and give them to Brandon Ingram. He can score. How does that change things? He's a credible driving threat too, which other guys aren't, right? You're not worried necessarily about CJ. He, he had, he's been attacking the basket in a way that we haven't seen recently because he knows just someone has to do it. He's a credible driving threat, but is anyone else, can anyone else truly put pressure on the rim like that? And don't say Jonas Valanciunas or Larry Nance Jr. On driving like that. B.I. is a credible threat. That can create some space for Zion Williamson. He's a playmaker, in that sense, and a score, and he can shoot the three. I don't have anyone else that can do any of that, right? That's not even to mention that his defense is very good. Jose and his energy off the bench, you have Najee doing that, but Dyson doesn't give you the exact same kind of boost out there, though he actually had a good game in this one, I thought. you know, And you need Jose out there for when you have minutes right now with Brandon Ingram out. So it's compounding on itself where it's just CJ out there by himself without Zion Williamson. Having someone to also handle the ball and give him a bit of a break and let him play a different role, I think would be a really important thing. The Pelicans don't have that. It's just tough to win games when that's the case. I know you want to hear an answer, right? But there isn't one right now until, well, there, there are, there's a few. We'll get into them in a second here. But you want a better answer than what I'm going to give you. You want me to say the coach is doing a poor job. Eh, there's some things I would change and tweak, but overall, no, I think Willie Green is fine. The team has improved every single year under him. The defense is good no matter who's out there, which is going to tie into something we're going to talk about next when it comes to Jordan Hawkins, because that dude needs to be playing more. So the answer is they're hurt. We've heard this all before in New Orleans. You're probably frustrated hearing that. That might mean they need to make some changes, but the good news is this injury to Brandon Ingram isn't one that's going to hopefully... Keep him out for an extended period of time. This wasn't something where some guy missed half the season or didn't finish the season out. So to get off the skid and kind of get out of the danger zone that they're going into, just get healthy. That might be in the playing tournament. That's going to be disappointing if that's the case, but there's every reason to believe this team would get out of the playing tournament when they're healthy because of the level that they've achieved when they are healthy. When they're healthy, a lot of these problems that we're screaming, we need answers for, just go away. They aren't problems then. You can't necessarily build in every contingency to your team. It's not what you want to hear, but it's the truth of all of this. You saw some good moments from this team. They got back into it a little bit, right? They're experimenting with some Zion at the five lineups, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in the next segment too because that wasn't terrible. And then we'll get into the refs because that was terrible. Sometimes there's just problems that don't have an answer right now, and Brandon Ingram would fix this and would minimize some of the center position issues that they're having too. So we just got to wait and hope that they can get this win against the San Antonio Spurs. Hope they can get the win against the Portland Trailblazers. That'll at least kind of like stabilize them here. But the biggest thing they need is just to get healthy. And that'll kind of change their fortunes. Coming up next, though, what can they do in the meantime? Because it doesn't sound like we're getting Brandon Ingram back in the next game. So if they don't have him and you want to win some of these, here's some things that the Pelicans can do, and it starts with Jordan Hawkins. That's coming up here next in today's episode of Locked On Pelicans. Right now, though, I'm excited to tell you about Amazon Fire TV because Fire TV is your destination for sports from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes as well as free and live TV. So whether it's opening week in a baseball or college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. And Fire TV recently created Fire TV Channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands all for free. That also includes all of us at Locked On. You want to see Locked On Pelicans on there? It is on there. 
and most of the big pro leagues and big conferences as well. So Fire TV channels lets you dive into all of the game analysis, highlights, and more. So keep up to date with the world of sports, whether it's March Madness, the NBA, MLB, and lots more. They also have other things, great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos. Check out Fire TV channels or Fire TV, sorry, on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. I've been using it a lot. Trust me on this one. To learn more, visit amazon.com slash locked on Fire TV. Today's episode of Locked On Pelicans is also brought to you by FanDuel America's number one sports book. Sports calendar is loaded right now, and FanDuel's making it even more exciting to get in on the action because right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $200 you can use to bet the tourney, MLB, NBA, NHL, and so much more. They also have the player props also. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a big win. Get that $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. Visit FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook and the official sportsbook of Locked On. And thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen. Today and every day, we are here Monday through Friday, the number one Pelicans podcast, covering everything you want to know about this Pelicans team. How can they get off the skid here? What do they need to do in the offseason? We'll look at playoff matches, matchups, all of those things. We cover it all, so subscribe wherever you get your podcast. Join almost 10,000 Pelicans fans on YouTube as well, and tell a friend about the show. Maybe going to have something coming, trying to organize an event. Would that be fun? Would you go to that? Hopefully you would. going to try and organize a live in-person event before um, certain things happen here. So hopefully I'll have more news on that for you next week. Having, having a meeting Thursday about that. So that'll be exciting. So hopefully something to come from all that real soon for you. So just keep an ear out for that. And let's all get, hang out and talk Pelicans because that would be a lot of fun. So let's keep talking though about the loss to the Orlando Magic 117-108 here. There are a couple of things about this game that I found frustrating. So one, I like that the Pelicans just tried something different. I, like, I truly do, right? Like, it, we know what's not working. JV's not working right now. Larry Nance Jr. isn't working right now. So run Zion at the five. They did that to end the first half, and it paid all right dividends, I thought. I didn't think it was amazing, but certainly they had a couple of lineups out there that seemed to do a little bit of work. The problem was defensively, and this is something that Willie Green's going to hate, but he's just going to have to deal with, is it allowed Paolo Bancaro just to go off. The Zion at the five lineups, you saw Bancaro kind of go in and putting up some points big time in the second quarter because there was just no one who could stop him during that stretch. He had 10 points in that period. Zion defending him, that's not going to be great, even though Zion's a much better defender this season. And with the Orlando Magic kind of just being more physical than New Orleans, that's something that they have had trouble with all season long when that is the case. So you hope that maybe that works, but clearly I don't know if that was the right answer here. I will say for the final five minutes or so of the game, they outscored the, or, or not the game, the half, they outscored the Orlando Magic. They were right in this one. But it seemed very clear that that wouldn't work truly long term. So in the second half, the Pelicans went with Jeremiah Robinson Earl, not someone who's gotten a lot of time recently, only somewhat recently signed to the active roster. But look, it's not Larry Nance Jr. It's not Jonas Valanciunas. I don't know what the answer is. I know right now it's not those two players. Maybe it could be Jeremiah Robinson Earl. Unlikely, and it wasn't in this game, but he was a positive in terms of plus minus. You know, that's good. Part of that is due to some, some points at the end when he was out there on the court, but he wasn't as negative as some of the other guys were, and I think that says something. They needed to try something different. They did. I at least appreciate that, right? And with the standings getting tight, the Pelicans, as I'm recording this, are in six. They could be in seventh. They could be in seventh by the time I'm done recording this. Looking at it, the Suns are up 20-something on the Cleveland Cavaliers going into the fourth, so they likely will be. That's scary because it's danger zone now for the Pelicans. And now they're potentially dealing with a Zion Williamson injury. It's worth noting that he didn't play for the final seven minutes and 30 seconds due to what he said was a finger injury. What Willie Green said was a finger injury that he hurt maybe dunking the basketball there. There was the moment when Jalen Suggs went into his legs. He went to the locker room. He came back in and played more on the refs and all of that. My eyes are bugging me. Um, 
coming up in the third segment here, the next segment of Locked On Pelicans. But the Pelicans are kind of searching for answers, so they're trying things. I like that. Zion at the five, even if I don't know if that's quite the answer, you saw some good coming from that. Jeremiah Robinson Earl, sure, why not, right? CJ did his best just to do everything he could to keep the team in the game. 36 points on 24 shot attempts is good because he got it going from three and he was aggressive and got to the line 11 times. 10 rebounds, four assists, two steals. He was good in this game, right? In the second half, first half he struggled with, but that's where B.I. would help. You know, they're, they're doing what they can. It's just not enough. I think one thing they need to look at is math. Some of you are going to hate this, and that's fine. They only took 29 three-point attempts in this game. That's better than the 20 they took the last time they played the Orlando Magic. But their three-point attempt average on the season is 32.3. That'll drop a little bit because of this game. They need to be taking more threes. You need to be taking more threes so you can at least just generate some offense from somewhere. If you need to take more threes, you've got to play Jordan Hawkins more. You have to play Jordan Hawkins more. It's that simple. Now, over his past couple of games, partially because he's not getting a ton of run, he's not shooting the ball particularly well. I don't care. He's a threat. He's someone that scares teams. You saw the Orlando Magic face guarding Trey Murphy at times when he was out there with Zion. They didn't want to give him any airspace to shoot in this game whatsoever. That's a useful player because it means it opens things up, right? This is a game where Trey probably should have taken more threes than six, but he couldn't because they wouldn't let him. That means there's room for somebody. Pair Trey and Hawkins and Zion. You can, you can kind of wall off Zion and still cover Trey. Can you do that when Jordan Hawkins is out there with CJ McCollum and then maybe Herb Jones? It's worth some trying out some of these lineups to see. They need more shooting. You know, they've said their target number is kind of 40. I don't think it's an arbitrary number that you want to set. I think that's dumb. It's more than 29, though. And they shot the ball well here. 12 for 29s, 41, 41.4%. Shoot more threes. If you need to find offense and you can't get it at the rim in other areas, you've got to find another way to do it. And they're not finding a way to generate tons and tons and tons of points in the paint for Zion Williamson to go out and just dominate. So you've got to do it another way. And that's probably more three-point shooting. That means Jordan Hawkins. If you're looking for an answer, right? And I said the answer is get healthy. One of the things you can at least try right now Because look, the answer is probably not Jeremiah Robinson Earl. More shooting on the court. It's been a thing all season long. You see how impactful it is on Zion Williamson and what he can do. So give him more space. Let him not go through as many guys once you start making shots, right? This goes too long about what I've said. You can't space the court for Zion Williamson. You can punish teams for the way that they are defending him and teams are walling him off. Go small, put more shooters out there on the court. Hawkins is a threat. He should be ripping shots right now. You only had three, four guys that took multiple threes. Trey, CJ, both cool. Dyson Daniels went four or five. That's awesome. And then Jeremiah Robinson Earl was 0 for three. There's room to have Hawkins get minutes here and shoot the ball. There's room for that. They need to find a way to get him in there and see if that can help this team because they need more three-point shooting and all of that. So hopefully that is something that they start to realize, especially against the San Antonio Spurs who have Victor Wembenyama and are going to be defending the paint. You're going to need to shoot. So it's time to play Jordan Hawkins more and maybe this can stop the tailspin a little bit and stop some of the bleeding until you get Brandon Ingram back. If you can win this game against the San Antonio Spurs, that's big. If you can win the game against Portland, that's big. If you can find a way to beat Phoenix on the road, who has the tiebreaker over New Orleans already, that's going to be a big game. That's enough to get you the sixth seed, I think, before you play the Warriors, the Kings, and then the Lakers. And that Kings game, I don't think is guaranteed. I really don't. It's going to be tough to beat them five times in a season when you've already beaten them four, right? Like, that can be tough. So you've got to make some tweaks and that means Willie Green is going to need to get outside of his comfort zone with some of the players and what he likes to do defensively. But here's the thing. That's the final thing I'll say on it. And this is something I've said all season long. The defense is good. The defense is good no matter who's out there. So try more offense. If you're, do you trust your defensive scheme? Do you trust your defensive identity? If you do, you can probably get away with Hawkins being out there. They're going to need more shooting or, or Matt Ryan pick. More shooting, though. 
that's what we need to see. And hopefully that makes things easier for Zion Williamson. We'll probably get an update on that, his finger tomorrow, and we'll give you an update in the show the next, the next one that we do from that. But that looms kind of large here. So coming up next, what do you think about the refs? I know what the Pelicans thought about the refs. They thought they were bad. I thought they were bad too. I actually want to talk about that with a couple of things here because I liked some of the fight and some of the players being like, enough is enough. I thought that was a good thing. That's coming up here next in today's episode of Locked on Pelicans. Today's episode of Locked on Pelicans is brought to you by Robinhood. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood is the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is giving uh, is boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on a 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good only through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as of Q1 2024 validated by Radius Global Market. Research investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of the first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good state. Standing Robinhood Financial LLC member SIPC is a registered broker dealer. And thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We are here Monday through Friday, the number one Pelicans podcast covering everything you want to know about this team. Subscribe wherever you get your podcast. Join almost 10,000 Pelicans fans on YouTube as well. And by the way, are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN all day on your TV? Don't. You have to turn down the volume from all the yelling. So make the switch like I did to Locked On Sports Today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the yelling. Locked On Sports Today brings can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right. Let's wrap up talking about the Pelicans' loss to the Orlando Magic 117-108. Likely, as I'm recording this, going to be in the seventh spot. So in the play-in tournament now after when when you're listening to this or like the next day. Not great, but there's still time to get out of it. And again, once they get healthy, that's going to be kind of the biggest thing. I would just like to avoid the play-in tournament and just get into the postseason properly and not have to stress. That would be a really, really nice thing. So... You know what's not helping them with that? The referees. This game was out of control in a bad way. Not like, oh, out of control, fun, right? The refs were bad in this game. I don't know what was going on here, but the way they just completely lost control of this, they were going to run into a situation that almost happened a couple of times of another fight when the Pelicans fought the Miami Heat and that resulted in injections and suspensions. The refs need to take control of this and they need to be consistent. And I think part of this is a lot of frustration from the players over the way things not were just officiated in this game, but how they've changed over the season. Post All-Star break, refs have been calling the game very differently. There's been deep dives into, is that a league mandate? What's going on here with all of this? It doesn't matter. It's different. And that doesn't seem right to kind of officiate the game differently later in the season than you did in the beginning. CJ McCollum talked about it after this game where he's like, I got 11 free throws. That doesn't really happen in a single game for me. He's like, there are five game stretches where I don't get 11 total or any free throws sometimes. So that kind of shows you how weird all of this was. Look, there was the play in the first half when Jalen Suggs kind of dove at Zion Williamson's legs. Here's the thing with that, right? Or maybe it was the second half. I don't remember. You know, I, he slipped. He slipped. That wasn't like necessarily a dirty player intentional or anything like that. I, I truly think that. You got to just review it immediately. It shouldn't take the Pelicans like begging for a review and the arena seeing a replay of that and then kind of being outraged to look at that. There was a play where that's, that's illegal in the NFL. There's a 15-yard personal foul flag. Just review it. Just make sure there wasn't intent there. And you go, okay, slip, but at least we did the right thing to try and protect Zion Williamson and the other players by reviewing it in the first place and not like being coerced into doing that. 
That's how you take control of the game. I don't know the refs were in this one, but with how many texts were given out, like all of that seems incorrect for, not incorrect, they were right because they were yelling at him, but that ref seemed to just want to put himself into the middle of this game entirely, entirely, right? He was almost looking for guys to say something to him so that he could then just give them a tech and eject them from it. And that doesn't seem right in any capacity, does it? Call the fouls, make them consistent because they absolutely weren't in this game, right? Zion Williamson had four free throws. That's it. Paolo Bancaro had seven in the first quarter, I think it was, finishing with 13 on the night. You think Zion wasn't going inside? He absolutely was. Yeah, Bancaro took seven in the first quarter. Zion took zero. Something's off there. Something's off. Zion gets a bad whistle. We know that, right? The players getting texts to kind of yell at them. Zion getting one. Herb getting one. Dyson getting one. Trey Murphy getting one. I think Herb getting another one and being ejected. Dyson getting ejected. Some of those things. I, I liked that. You know, they needed to kind of just say, hey, we are fed up with all this. I don't care whether Willie Green does or doesn't. Like, I really don't. Willie Green getting a tech, anything like that, doesn't truly matter. The players know that he has their back, right? In the game, in his comments after the game, he even talked about, we kind of lost our composure. We've got to deal with bad ref calls. That part I agree with, actually, right? Like, I don't think he threw the players under the bus or anything there. I think they lost their composure throughout the game by letting them just selves get taken out of it and being too frustrated to go out and play their game. This was a winnable game. They started to mount a comeback and could have done it. You know, if you had B.I. or if you, you know, even had Zion maybe to close the game when they got it within six, I think. So there were opportunities to do that. But because they're doing this so late, right, they've done this against Boston. They did this against the Suns and now the Orlando Magic. They don't make their run till the fourth quarter. If they stay in the game a little bit more, if they're a little bit more composed, and I don't know if that's the right word to use here, in the first three quarters, Cool. Maybe you can complete that comeback and finally get that first win when you're trailing, entering into the fourth quarter. But the refs really impact New Orleans. I get it. Zion's sick of this, and he should be. At a certain point, you know, though, if they're not going to call it, you just got to deal with it, right? Like, or, or not play. And I don't think that's what he wants to do. And I know the Pelicans are sending videos and things to the league office. Let them handle that sort of thing. If you're not going to get the calls, try and sell them. You know, and, and do, do what you can but you, you've just, you know, it's it's playing the hand that you're dealt. It sucks. It's not how it should be, but it's kind of like life's not fair. You got to go out and deal with it. So do that. Do it to the best of your ability. I'm not saying that's easy at all because it's not. But if they're not calling things, they're not calling things, right? Get the tech. Try and send a message that way. And maybe things will change. Like, I, I like that sort of move by these guys. Just kind of really being fed up with the refs and everything. By the way, Trey... Herb and Dyson getting those texts allowed the entire arena to chant refs you suck more during the technical free throws, which was really fun. You saw Jose Alvarado and Larry Nance Jr. kind of pumping up the crowd with those chants during that time too. I like that. I like all of that. That's the right attitude that I want to see from this team. So be frustrated, but let's let it all out in this game and try and focus on just winning the game and playing your best version of basketball in the next one. It means changes from Willie Green in the rotations here. It's time for more Jordan Hawkins to see if that helps. If you're experimenting with other things, you can experiment by putting him in. Let me know what the change you want to see is. I know what y'all are going to say. Let me know what the change you want to see is in the next game to try and get a win here. So that's going to do it for this episode of Locked On Pelicans. As always, I'm your host, Jake Madison, at Nola Jake on Twitter. And I'll be back with y'all tomorrow, hopefully with a good Zion Williamson update and to get you set for the weekend.